Hi everybody. Today I wanted to talk to you about my Blabrous Atropose cockroaches. These are, I believe, a South American species that came up through a shipping company in Florida. They went to move some boxes outside of the shipping warehouse and they found some of these guys around some of the pallets, so they gathered them up and you know, you can you can buy them online. I got these from uh, Roach Crossing. The the guy over there is absolutely phenomenal. He he will spend hours explaining to you how all of this stuff works and what the best conditions for the various roaches that he's got are. He's got hundreds of varieties and uh, the prices are pretty good. Now the reason that I have this particular species is, let's see if I can get them out of here. They get quite large. Now for reference I've got nine inch hands. Each of my fingers are about four and a half inches long so you can tell this guy is pretty big. They are pretty docile. Uh, they look a lot like death's head roaches. Now, some of them have this pattern on the back, some of them are just black, so this may or may not be a pure strain. Um, I had another blabberous species, a couple of individuals in here at some point. I don't know if they would have crossbred or not. Now, this is a very large female. The males don't get this big. Uh, they don't fly, they don't climb, so they're safe to keep indoors. Uh, they are quite a bit larger than dubia roaches, but they're still soft-bodied. They don't bite or anything like that. Now, these guys are interesting because compared to dubia roaches and red runners and things like that that people like to keep, these are nutritionally almost exactly what South American cichlids need. When you look at the actual nutritive analysis of cockroaches, these guys are much higher in omega-3 and 6 fatty acids than most of the other commonly kept species. They are a perfect matchup for almost all of the amino acid requirements. So these are as close to a superfood. I'm sorry, you want to go? These are as close to a superfood as you're going to get for your fish. Now these are obviously way too big for, say, my angelfish to eat. But what I'll do is when I'm doing tank maintenance, I'll go through and I'll find any of the guys that, you know, they're really not doing well. These guys are all still alive. They're not moving anymore because they've just sort of given up. They're not the healthiest guys that are in here. And it's kind of cold in this room, so anybody that I'm not bothering really doesn't want to be moving right now because they're chilly. So... You take, you take the guys that aren't doing real well, you grind them up, you add a little bit of earthworm meal, and you make a DIY food that is just absolutely phenomenally well matched to what they actually want. And, oh, that guy's got some red. Compared to other sources of protein that people commonly use, like beef heart, these guys are a much better source of protein. They're very low in fat. It's not, whoops, it's not mammal fat. So you don't run into, the, into the, any of the issues that you do using mammalian sources of meat. Uh, they're a whole lot cheaper than things like shrimp because they're essentially free. You know, you, you pay for them up front. I think I paid maybe 20 cents each for a giant batch of these guys. They breed very quickly. They are live bearers, so they don't breed quite as fast as, like, Turkestan roaches that will leave egg cases absolutely everywhere and just overrun you. But as far as live bearers go, these guys breed very quickly. They grow very quickly. I've had a variety of different roaches that I kept for my water dragons. And, you know, I got them all at... Let's see if I can find some babies in here. There we go. I got them all about this big. And these guys, most of them were adults. By the time my dubias had two that were just about to shed to the point that they would start to be in their actual adult forms. So they grow much faster and much larger than dubias, which makes them a much better food source if you're going to be looking for that. You do need a pretty large enclosure and a pretty large amount of food if you're going to be trying to use them as a regular source of food. These ones, I just give them my scraps. There are 
a lot more in here than than it looks like. Uh, let me see what these further in look like here. Yep, there's a fair number of them piled in there. Uh, there's a fair number of dead ones in there too. Uh, I'm actually in the middle of maintenance and cleaning these ones out. Now, they don't need any special source of water, you know, as long as you give them some fresh vegetables once in a while. I should say, you know, keep keep some in there daily. Uh, they'll do okay. Now, primarily, they eat dog food in my case. You know, I just grab a handful and throw it in once a month and they do all right. I use potatoes or whatever I've got for scraps available for water. Potatoes are super cheap. Cockroaches are interesting in that they can synthesize almost everything that they need to live except for choline. So if you're looking for a cheap source of food to keep some cockroaches around, potatoes are an excellent source of choline and they will live perfectly happily off of just potatoes, but potatoes can stink a little bit. So I use I use the dog food because it doesn't create smells. Now, they're not picky about what they eat. Anytime I make any sort of food, I just keep the leftover scraps and I give it to them. You don't want to put meat in here unless it's something dry like dog food. Cat food is a little higher in protein than they really do well with. So dog food is a much better source because of all the starches and things. But anytime I go and, you know, get a head of lettuce, they eat the core of it. Anytime I'm making anything with zucchini or cucumbers or anything like that, I throw them the ends, bell peppers, whatever. If something goes bad in the fridge, I toss it in here and they're perfectly happy to eat it. And they're perfectly happy to eat each other. You can see this guy over here chowing down on one of the dead guys. So they're pretty easy to take care of. This tank I've had for about two years. Um, the numbers are dwindling, dwindling a little bit right now because you know, I, I went through some life problems recently and forgot to feed them for, I don't know, a month. There's still a huge amount of them in here. If I stick my hand down here, they're all over the place in, in the actual substrate. Uh, but they're pretty hardy. It's really hard to kill them all off. And if you do go through something where you have a massive die-off, they bounce back pretty quickly. Roaches do a phenomenal job of surviving even with really low genetic diversity. If you have just three or four of them, it's perfectly safe to end up with a colony of thousands from that. So they make a really, really good source of food. So I'm going through and I'm gathering all of the guys that are sick, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and mix up a batch of food with that as soon as I'm done with my maintenance. I've got to clean out the couple dead ones that are in here and, you know, clean up clean up the, the base a little bit, add some more substrate and keep them a little happier and get a heat lamp in here because it's finally getting cold even though it's the end of the year. But uh, we'll pick up again as soon as I get these guys out when we start actually processing them into a paste. This is the next day. I went ahead and froze these guys just to kill them, uh, just because I don't like them squirming around in the blender, it makes me uncomfortable. I've gone ahead and coated them in spirulina, there's a little bit of extra powder in there. Uh, you don't need a whole lot of it when you're doing food, the uh, asphaxanine content is pretty high, so if you're using it just for a, a color and mineral additive, you don't need a lot. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more in here. There's a little, little garlic mixed in here, which is what the white is. Then to this, I'm going to add some earthworm that I've powdered, some cod that I've powdered, a bit of romaine lettuce, some napa cabbage, which is very, very high in vitamins and minerals. A little bit of paprika, just so that it's not just a sludgy green color. So I went ahead and added <clears throat> two tablespoons of my earthworm powder, a tablespoon of cod, uh, about a half tablespoon of napa cabbage, half tablespoon of romaine lettuce, and about a half tablespoon of paprika, which is just bell pepper powder, essentially. Uh, you can see the uh, spirulina really dominates the color. 
Now, I didn't bother with removing any of the exoskeleton bits, because, you know, this is for my angelfish, they've got a secondary jaw set, they chew things up, and anything that they don't like that's in the food, they actually are just going to spit out and it'll get sucked up by the filter. So, there's less of an issue for that, as long as I can get the pieces small enough, they're perfectly able to digest chitin, they break it down into a carbohydrate source, they don't need much, but it's something. So I'm going to try to get this a little finer, then I'm just going to uh, mix in some pre-boiled pectin that I've got here. Uh, you know, you can use gelatin, you can use cornstarch, you can use whatever you want. Pectin's just what I've got around. It starts to come apart a little bit when they start going after it. Gelatin might hold together a little bit better in that regard than uh, pectin does. I, I think I probably just didn't use enough for this batch. It's, it's a little bit hard to tell when you're doing a mostly powdered formula as to how much you should add. They enjoy it a lot. It's a nice way to boost color if you've got some fish that are supposed to be orange or red. A lot of flake foods and pellet foods don't really have a whole lot of anastaxin in it. Doing something that you can get a whole lot of spirulina and paprika and things like that in to really boost the color pigment chemicals goes a long way. These guys, after a couple weeks of this, should really brighten up a whole lot and be ready for sale. 